Temperatures are headed our way, and we are talking frigid. Meteorologist Pete Grigsby in the First Alert Weather Center tonight. Pete? Kelly, it all started about two days ago when the colder air from the north definitely moved in and has impacted us for the past couple of afternoons. Now we're heading for a very cold night. The temperatures are definitely below normal. When you have clear skies, a very light wind, and temperatures below the freezing point, Get ready, you're going to be dealing with some frost. Now, right now in First Alert Doppler, it is dry out there, but look how cold it is. We're already down to 38 in Kansas City, St. Joseph 34, and Topeka holding steady at 41. For the overnight, though, temperatures will drop into the 20s. The winds will be very light from the northwest direction, and I like what the phrase is on the top there. Either cover those plants or bring them inside because, yes, it's not typical for this time of year, but we are talking frost for the overnight hours. When will spring return? We'll have that, of course, in our 7 day forecast up a little later. Kelly? Pete, thank you. We haven't wow. been real happy with our weather lately, but nothing like that. We really need to be thankful that we haven't had anything more severe. So far, severe weather the season hasn't been that bad for us. We're yeah. seeing all the horrible images around us. Yeah. yeah. But, you know, still, we have to be prepared for something like yeah, that. That's true. All right, here in Kansas City, though, you know, wouldn't it be nice if I can get on here and tell you that the upcoming week would be nothing but sunshine? Wouldn't it be nice if I could just tell you that's going to be nothing but 70s? And wouldn't it be nice if Jerry Gish would do all your yard work for you. <laughs> now look at me. <laughs> that ain't going to happen, all right? But what is going to happen is a little, do you need those scripts? I got more. Oh, oh boy, <laughs> I'm going over there. Earlier you promised you would do everyone's taxes, now I you're know, saying he's, yard he's, work. He's gonna you be a, you're going to be a busy man, aren't you? My day off you? is going to be busy, I can tell. <laughs> In the newscast, I'll give you his phone number, all right? <laughs> okay, but what we are expecting for the upcoming week are temperatures tomorrow morning in the 20s. It's going to be kind of a frosty morning, and here we are talking mid-April. You know I'm only being serious, Jerry, so, you know. <laughs> As temperatures do rise through the week, you'll have some sunshine, and then by probably Wednesday and Thursday, it'll be back to normal. However, we are going to start the week off on a cold note. It is 38 in Lee Summit. There is a wind chill of 34. Your winds are from the north. He, he is picking up the papers, by the way. You're a good man. I wish you could see that. It's just bending over and just picking up, cleaning up the studio. Humidity at 48%. The pressure is now rising. Spinning the globe and coming on into the uh, good old eastern Kansas, western Missouri area where winds are slowly subsiding. It's good to see them down to five and six, but however, when the winds drop off, you have clear skies and the temperatures are below the freezing point, you're going to be dealing with some frost early tomorrow morning. Better cover those plants before you head to bed. 33 is the current wind chill in Kansas City, a little colder in Olathe, 27, Chillicothe, 37, and Kirksville also in the 30s. Here are your overnight low temperatures from Gallatin and Brookfield all the way down to Lucene and Lawrence and the winds also very light northwest. So where are the big changes? Well, first of all, high pressure will keep us mostly clear. That's going to give you the sunshine, right? Cold air that's been over us will slowly exit, move to the east. The warmer air that's out to the west will start building and moving across the plains. That will be affecting us by Wednesday. So you got about two more days. Then you'll start to feel the difference as we get back into our spring setup. Not a cloud anywhere to the west, Nern cloud, but as you go to the east over Kentucky and Tennessee and a little bit of light rain over uh, Illinois, it's a little bit of snowfall popping up and when you look at uh, Louisville, Kentucky, there's your winds coming in from the northwest and then all of a sudden we just sit back and wait for the changes to arrive. There's your plenty of sunshine, I can promise you that, at least for the next couple of days, but not for the entire week. The temperatures do climb. I will guarantee 68 by your Tuesday as we get into the 70s on Wednesday. But there's your chance of a rain shower coming late Wednesday into Thursday with a high of 66. Although the temperatures will drop slightly, it's not going to be like we had this past week where much colder air moves in. This time you're going to feel like spring by midweek and it'll kind of stay that way all the way through next weekend. Jerry's going to be a busy man upcoming week. <laughs> okay. I'm, so. I'm trying to, this one I actually needed. The okay, one that I well. crumpled up. So. <laughs> Trying to kind it's of weather, we don't need scripts, so you know. Yeah, that's true. Maybe. That's a good point. I cleaned the other ones up. That's We're right. fine. He cleaned it up. <laughs> yeah, all right. Pete, thanks. Well, a brutal videotaped beating has been made. A smart way to keep moving forward. A whole lot of shaking going on in the Midwest this morning. An earthquake along the New Madrid Fault. Lisa and I will have team coverage tonight. But from the skies, the past couple of days we've had nothing but rain. Does that mean rain for your weekend? Find out at five o'clock. Also at 5, workers at the GM Fairfax plant could be hitting the picket line. To learn more about that earthquake, we have a link on our website. Go to KMC.com and look under 
news mm. leaks, and that was. I mean, just from reading the history, it's incredible that earthquake. That and is, the meteorologist we just saw looked so calm, but we're not used to waking up to earthquakes. That is uh, meteorologist Byron Douglas. Mm -hmm. I uh, went to school with him and oh, wow. also worked in Evansville, so I know him. When I saw that video, I went. All right, Byron, how are you doing that? He did a good job. No, he did yes. great because he, he mentioned the earthquake possibility right away, and I mentioned he said maybe it was a train, but the whole time he was like, well, you know, yeah, we're, all, yeah. we're well, here in the fault. So. Here we are. Let's go on with our weather right. as the camera was shaking. Although he also <laughs> mentioned at one point, you know, we've got a lot of towers around here. Yeah, you know, he was kind of thinking yeah. about the possibilities. That but. would be eerie. Yeah, I know that area well. So, yeah, we, we felt it all the way through Kansas City, how too. Mm -hmm. All right, so nothing to be worried about when it comes to rumblings coming from the sky. At least it's going to be quiet from that point of view. And anyway, as you have for the overnight, a little bit of drizzle. But this then we're setting ourselves up for what? Could it be? Could it be a nice weekend? Oh, oh that would goodness. be great. All right. What do I need You're to say anything fibbing, else? Right? No, I'm not <laughs> fib. It's not April Fools anymore. All right. We're currently at 55 degrees in Poria, Kansas. Winds are from the northwest, creating a wind chill. Of all things, humidity at 47 percent, and the pressure is falling. Weather watch your numbers for this Friday afternoon. When you go Chillicothe down through Olathe, still in the 40s, a lot of cloudiness out there, and a few spots of drizzle here and there, but. Here's the thing, we're talking now towards the end of April and we're still dealing with wind chill factors in the 30s and 40s. It feels like 39 when you had that brisk wind for the northwest in Topeka, St. Joseph 41, Chillicothe 47, and Kirksville at 43. Plenty of cloudiness, but not to the west. In fact, to the east is where this leading edge of the colder air is now heading across east of St. Louis into Illinois, Indiana. There's Evansville where you saw that uh, video of the earthquake from Byron Douglas. Also, this area of low pressure, though, is right overhead. Until it starts to track northeastward, we get the wraparound effect, and that's why you're getting the cloudiness, but we're starting to see the clearing skies, especially over Salina, Kansas, and westward. So it's just a matter of time before we see the clouds depart. Overnight, 42, 41 for St. Joseph. Gallatin, you'll drop down to 40, and Brookfield at 41. A few light drizzle drops when you look at the Kansas side for 42 in Lawrence, and your overnight lows, not so bad. Now, let's talk about that weekend. Now, the clouds will slowly depart, but I like what we're seeing here. What are we seeing? Milder air to the west, and especially we're going to tap into that. So limited sunshine in the morning, then clouds slowly eroding away, but how about this? Daytime high is 66. We say goodbye. Colder air, track eastward. A low warmer air just in time for your Sunday. It doesn't stop there. In fact, we start tapping into that very nice milder air to the southwest. It's going to be rather breezy, so these strong winds will keep the wind speeds around 15 to 25. But because of that, we're talking about daytime highs in the 70s. All right. You might burn yourself, watch out. All right, a little bit of sunshine, 66, but there's your best day for the weekend. 77 for a high, the trend is upward, but then we have a lot of cloudiness returning by mid next week. So in other words, enjoy the weekend. Look what happens. As you get into Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, a few spotty showers. The Royals are back in town at Kauffman Stadium, but a lot of clouds to deal with and a lot of showers, but the temperatures do hold steady. Daytime highs in the 70s, overnight lows in the 50s and 60s. So that this time the timing is right. We yes. get the, <laughs> we get the well, sunshine for the weekend. A lot of events from last weekend have been rescheduled for mm -hmm. this weekend. There you go. <laughs> so I think a lot of folks will be smiling about A welcome that. sight and it'll feel great, especially by Sunday. Oh, good. All 70s? Right. Yeah. Perfect. Yes. All, right. All right. Thanks, Pete. Coming up on KNBC 9 News at 6. Plays right in its shadow. So yes, tornadoes can affect major metropolitan areas. Brian Busby, KNBC 9 News. Back to you. You know, you still hear those myths, though, no matter know, how much we, we kind of try to discredit them. But one at a time, Mother Nature wipes them all out, all that, those myths. That, that's right. And, you know, we have to, that's the thing about weather. It keeps you on your toes. It's changing every day. And, of course, we have to deal with the myths, too, that go on. Yeah. But just when we think we have something to figure out, we have to go Help back and study. Yeah. <laughs> that's what makes it like interesting. It. Yeah. it does. I mean, we're now waiting for a nice weekend. We're going to get that. But another myth I want to mention to you is that, yes, that is Jerry Gish's real hair. <laughs> <you see on there. laughs> I'm glad you cleared that up because, you know. You know, I, hey, you know what? I give him a hard time. But you've had years of Joel Nichols. You can handle my oh, jokes, yeah, exactly. right? Exactly. I'm actually, nothing. It, it snaps right here. Yeah, in the there back. you go. No, Very good. good. <laughs> anyway. Something new here. We have to put Kelly in between us here. That's a good reason for that. Skycast does look good for tomorrow, by the way. Way. If you're wondering, hey, are my allergies kicking up? Could it be from the pollen? Yes, oak is very high at 503. Mold, cladosporium is low, reading at 5, actually 867. There's your sky casting for today. Lee Summit, Missouri, you're at 45 degrees. You have a wind chill of 40, 40 
Winds have been rather brisk from the west northwest direction at 9, 10 miles an hour. Humidity at 90 percent and <laughs> pressure is rising. We're at 45, St. Joseph 46, Topeka 47. Oh, wouldn't you like to tap in a little bit warmer air to the south? Ah, that's going to happen very shortly. It's just little patience, patience, my son. All right, a little bit back, back side of this low pressure. A lot of cloudiness locked in over us. But you start to see the clearing skies, Salina and westward over uh, Goodland, Kansas. In fact, the bulk of the precipitation is now moved to the east and northeast. And this is what we call the wraparound effect. A little bit of light rain and cool drizzle for the rest of the overnight hours. And temperatures will drop maybe a couple of degrees where they are now. And that is it. So the cloudiness kind of acts like a blanket for your overnight. Kind of keep you all snugly. And it looks like our winds from the west around uh, 10 to 20 miles an hour. 42 for Richmond. Gallatin, you'll drop down to 40. Uh, Brookville at 41, Lawrence 42, and Lacine at 44 degrees. Let's talk about that good old weekend. Finally get some warmer air in here and say goodbye to all that cloudiness we've had. Cooler air to the east, warmer air to the west. We're kind of sandwiched in between, and you look at it, partly sunny skies. That mean put two of those on there, but you'll have some uh, good old clearing by afternoon. Daytime high, 66. Okay, we can live with that. It's going to get better just in time for your Sunday. Talked about the warmer air to the west. We're definitely going to tap into that. Why? Because of strong southwest winds. When they start to kick up, it will be windy on Sunday. But remember where the winds are coming from? They're coming from the southwest where the warmer air is. That's why your Sunday is going to be the pick day for the weekend. Let's talk about that. Watch out, you might burn yourself on that sunshine. 66 tomorrow, up to 77, and plenty of sunshine for your Sunday. Here it goes on the seven day. Plenty of cloudiness remains over the midweek. Daytime highs do push into the 70s. Overnight lows in the upper 40s and 50s. Uh, Jerry, I'm just, I see that stare on your face. You, you, <laughs> I'm afraid well, to ask what he's was, thinking no, about. No, 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 actually okay. I was just too busy uh, making sure my hair looked good. Say yeah, next, that's all. Oh, right, <laughs> right. Anyway, a good weekend and a little bit of rainfall next week. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thanks. Well, get ready for some sarcastic comments. There may be a misspelling on your Go to ABC. All zeros. You're watching KMBC 9 News in HD with Kelly Ackerman, Jerry Ginch, weather with meteorologist Pete Grigsby, and sports with Nick Griffith. This is KMBC 9 News at 6. Local, live, coverage you can count on. The Royals just might be getting a little help from a higher power in their weekend series with the Yankees. ...block of South Harvard Avenue where a young man and a young woman were shot to death. Martin Augustine, thank you very much. The state of Missouri formally outlawed cockfighting in 1998. Louisiana banned it last year. The law there taking effect in August. It's the last state to make the sport illegal. Laura? Larry, I'm here with meteorologist Pete Grigsby because, Pete, we understand that we've got a risk of severe weather tonight. Tonight, even through tomorrow. And the thing is, Laura, uh, they've been getting heavy rain in northern Missouri, and that's mm. where the next mm. round of thunderstorms could be. And doesn't help the flooding no, situation sure either. So the slight risk, again, is for later tonight. This graphic over our shoulder here shows most of it being northern Missouri for overnight tonight. But then as we look at tomorrow, the slight risk kind of slowly migrates southward. It does include a metro area, and that'll be mostly damaging winds and possible hail. So heavy rainfalls and, and strong thunderstorms associated with this. And again, if we do get some th strong thunderstorm activity in northern Missouri tomorrow, it doesn't help matters out because they've had quite a bit of rainfall and some flooding situations in the past 24 hours. More about that. And of course, you can complete forecast. That's all straight ahead. Larry, Laura. All right, Pete, we'll talk to you then. Overnight downpours in the Midwest are threatening strain levees along. Larry and Laura. All Thanks, right. Kelly. Yeah. Summertime moving in all around the Kansas City area today. It was pretty darn hot this afternoon. I was out in Weston <laughs> covering a story, and it was the first day that I can honestly yeah. say I'm like, Whew, uh -huh. it's hot. Right. And it moved in fast. Yeah. We were waiting for that, right? I mean, just like <laughs> it's like you wake up one day and like, okay, summer's not here. That's right. exactly right. <laughs> and anytime yeah. that happens here in Kansas City, the severe weather threat still lingers around, but it starts to migrate north mm -hmm. for a little bit, and that's what we're going to talk about. So there is severe weather threat again for tonight and tomorrow, but it is mostly north of Kansas City. That doesn't mean we're completely in the clear. However, we're going to keep a close eye on the situation for you, as we always do. The slight risk for overnight tonight does include most of northern Missouri. Why? Because some strong thunderstorms moving across Nebraska, even southern Iowa, could cross the state line and move into northeast Missouri. Now, tomorrow, that slight risk category comes a little closer to us. Most of it just consider uh, north of I-70, both on the Kansas and Missouri side. And, of course, if anything does happen, we will let you know 
immediately. Another thing to point out is how the flood warnings have increased. Now we've been seeing obviously along the Missouri River, the counties there, uh, and then of course the ones behind me there along the Mississippi River. When you look to the Northland though, because of the heavy rainfall they received the past 48 hours, several uh, and that means several counties under flood warnings in effect until tomorrow. So I just keep highlighting several counties here. You can see we're not alone. So the ground is fully saturated and the last thing we need is more rain. Well, summer has kicked in. Look at this 91. It's first time we hit 90 plus all year long. And it's not going to stop today. 92 for Topeka, Olathe 93, St. Joseph 91. The high in Chillicothe, you got up to 89 and Sedalia at 90. Cloudiness to the north. Thunderstorms to the north, just like we talked about. The slight risk of severe weather is mostly along the state line and northward, but that's all going to migrate southward as we get into tomorrow afternoon. Now, with that is the heat that's in place for Thursday and Friday. Big orange blob. Wish it could just move away, but yeah, you know what? We're approaching July, so it's typical, right, to get this kind of hot air in the afternoon. This leading edge of cooler air is going to be coming through late Friday. What that does is yes, it'll provide some cooler air behind it, but with that moving through, it's going to produce a few thunderstorms. Once this system moves on through coming in behind it, cooler, drier air. So the timing is perfect. It's going to be daytime highs in the what? What How about 80s? Cooler, less humid 80s for Saturday and Sunday, and it's going to feel feel very nice for at least two days. And then the heat starts to return as we talk about early next week. All right, future scan will show most of these scattered showers and thunderstorms will stay north. There's a good way to look at it. Notice how they just kind of pop up in different places and a lot of cloudiness left over. That's what we mean by scattered thunderstorms. So that's why not everybody is going to get rain out of this. So just kind of keep that in mind for your Thursday with a high of 91. Royals and Friday at 92. There's your cold front and the Wizards come to Wolf air to go out and see the Wizards play. Daytime highs in the 80s. Then we start to see the heat build back in early next week. So you are going to get a slight break from this heat. It's going to be over the weekend. And then, of course, we welcome in. Uh, gosh, can you believe it? July is coming up soon. No. no. Wow. No, I, I, where, where's this year going? Six months it from go? today, it'll be Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> I've started my shopping. Thanks, Laura. Yeah, I'd let you guys know. <laughs> Drop to 10 degrees or so. Yeah. Well, in Kentucky, they are still trying to understand what turned the night shift into a nightmare. And stop the rumors. You'll see more brake lights across the metro. We'll have your road construction update for you in First News. And if that road work gives you a migraine, learn about a new treatment that literally zaps away the pain. That's all tomorrow morning on First News. As always, we start at 5 a.m. on Channel 9. We'll see you then. Thank you, Chris. Looks pretty good tomorrow. Another warm one, high of 91 degrees. A few pop-up showers in the afternoon, but a lot like today. All right, that's our news for tonight. Thank you for joining us. Two and a Half Men is next, followed by Frazier and Sex in the City. First news, tomorrow morning at 5. We'll all see you again tomorrow night, and you can log on to KMBC.com 24 hours a day. Good night, everybody. Watching KMBC Channel 9 HD. This is KMBC 9 News at 5. Local, live coverage you can count on. A thunderstorm watch right now, a system that could dampen your evening plans. I was about to uh, go to the car. Mm -hmm. He just in a step out, you know, just behind the car. An anguished father describes what happened when his son was struck in a hit and run. Good evening. Right now at 5, strong to severe storms approaching our viewing area. Hail, gusty winds, heavy rain, all possible in this storm system. The Storm Prediction Center putting us under a slight risk of severe weather. And we have team weather and flooding coverage tonight. Leading off, meteorologist Pete Grigsby. Pete. Kelly, we've been watching the radar very closely all afternoon long. As of right now, it is very quiet. That is good news. However, as a cold front comes a little closer, we do have that slight risk of severe weather. We jump to first alert Doppler and the big box on your screen it represents a severe thunderstorm watch in effect till 10 o'clock tonight. Most of it in the Kansas side, very few counties along the state line on the Missouri side. However, no thunderstorms even as we speak. That could change though as we get into the evening hours as the storms will develop and the cold front moves on through. We're going to keep a close eye on this and of course and get a better look at this. You see a little farther out that watch box goes all the way up into southeast Nebraska. One of the last things we need right now is more rainfall because the grounds are fully saturated. So 
More about that, I go to my colleague, meteorologist Lisa Teachman, who has more about the flooding. Lisa? Yeah, take a look at this. These are all the counties, Pete, where we still have flood warnings in effect, and this does include many locations along the Grand River and also the Missouri River, and these flood warnings are going to remain in effect for quite some time, but flooding, a huge concern tonight for several Midwest communities. And we checked with sheriff's departments in Livingston and Davies counties today, and we're told that some rural roads have water, but no major highways are shut down. The big flood story right now remains near Winfield, Missouri. Emergency workers are still hoping to save about 100 homes after a levee was breached around 5 o'clock this morning. The Army Corps of Engineers says that muskrat holes caused the breach and volunteers are trying to build a four foot tall sandbag levee around the residential area. We encourage you to send your flooding and weather photos to us at news at KMBC.com. We'll feature them on air and also on our website. Jerry and Kelly, Pete will be back with more in your full forecast in just a bit. All right, thank you very much, Lisa. More news tonight. A three year old boy has died of injuries. He some serious damage. I'm Dion Lim and coming up, we'll show you a demonstration of just how dangerous some of your favorite fireworks can be. And a rather burning afternoon out there. Plenty of sunshine after a few morning showers. However, we did manage to get up to a mid 80s. It felt every bit of it. The normal high on this date is 86. We got to 85. Look at that record back in 1980. 105 degrees. How does that weekend look and what about our chances of thunderstorms? All that up next. You're watching KMBC 9 News in HD with Kelly Ackerman, Jerry Gish, and weather with meteorologist Pete Grigsby. This is KMBC 9 News at 5. Local, live, coverage you can count on. Fourth of July fireworks can cause a big bang, but also deal serious damage or injury. And KMBC 9's Dion Lim shows us why celebrations. Check out our website, KMBC.com, and click on news links. Heading to the lake this weekend? Well, don't forget to bring your water skis. Doctors say there are benefits you might not have thought about. It's estimated a 150-pound man can burn more than 400 calories an hour water skiing. Those who do it say it takes not only skill, but strong muscles and a lot of energy to hold onto that tow rope. But as long as you can stay up, you're burning calories. Water skiing is really a total body fitness. You need good, strong lower extremities. You need a solid core. Your abdominal muscles need to be well conditioned and you need good chest and arms. Now doctors say water skiing isn't for everyone. Pregnant women and people with bad knees should avoid the sport. Otherwise, if you're looking for a thrill while getting a great workout, it might be a great time to hit the water. If you've never done it, give it a shot. It is a lot of fun. There you go. It, it does really take is. some skill, though. No, it does. You <laughs> might not get up on the skis the first time. That's true. Well, it's gridlock. No highways were shut down. No accidents to report. But hundreds of cars stacked up today for what else? Cheap gas. Branson teamed up with local radio stations to provide gas for $1.99 a gallon. Consumers can pump up to 20 gallons for their vehicle. Branson is wow. encouraging Kansas Cityans to gas up and come on down to the tourist spot. Many families are trying to stay closer to home this summer because of the rising cost of gas. Well, you know what's going on right now? Hey, honey, Jerry Gish says I can go right. water skiing. <laughs> <laughs> Give it a shot as long as you're not pregnant. Again and again. Yeah, but he says I'll burn all the calories and off. There you go. See? See? Yeah, you go do that all summer and you'll lose, you know, 30 pounds. There you Excuse go. to go to the lake. And now with cheap gas and Branson, you're set. <laughs> <laughs> Something like that. Do, you know, I remember when $1.99 seemed a little expensive. Yeah. And now it seems yeah, incredibly cheap. Amazing. Yeah, it's amazing. We are watching some severe weather threat. We talked about this the past couple of days where if we can get through Friday, you're going to be home free for the weekend. All That's right. kind of what we're doing right now. All right, so we are keeping our eyes close to the radar in the First Alert Weather Center, keeping our eyes close to the skies to the west and northwest of here. My colleague Lisa Teachman has been here since uh, early morning, and she's been watching the radar. Let's go to her now, Lisa, and you're kind of tracking the storms up in the Northland, aren't you? Well, we are waiting for this cold front to finally move through, and yeah, this is going to be the last blast before things start to shape up and look a lot better in terms of the weather forecast for the weekend. But things have been very strong up in Omaha. Right now across the metro area, things are quiet. We did have one little pesky shower up in Maryville that tried to pop up but now has weakened. But this is the activity that we continue to monitor out ahead of that cold front. This is a very intense line of thunderstorms moving through Omaha. It has had a history of producing golf ball sized tail and get this. It's moving southeastward at 57 miles per hour, which means it is going to cause some damage in terms of wind. We have to watch the southern extent of this, and it does look like it's building back toward Lincoln. And with that severe thunderstorm watch in effect right now for portions of the metro area to the north and also to the west, that is what we are going to have to continue to monitor through 
the evening hours. Again, that severe thunderstorm watch in effect until 10 p.m. And Pete, we were thinking that maybe the thunderstorms we had earlier this morning might help to stabilize the atmosphere a little bit, but it doesn't look like we're going to stay that way for the rest of the evening. And you're right, Lisa, that kind of played a part in why we have the clear skies now. When you look at the temperature, currently 88 degrees in downtown Kansas City. The dew points at 67 and the winds from the southwest, humidity at 50 percent. All right, most of the activity has been in Northland, but we do have the slight risk of severe weather for the overnight. And it looks like as we get into the early morning hours, things really start to taper off. Thunderstorms, Lisa was pointing out, up over southeast Nebraska, southwest uh, Iowa, very close to the state line there. Not much to the west of us across the state of Kansas. However, we are going to keep a close eye on this as those thunderstorms will quickly erupt ahead of this so-called cold front that's trying to work its way a little closer and through well, the good old area of Kansas and also Nebraska and Iowa. 77 in Grand Island, 85 in Kansas City. You can already see the cooler air out behind this. So that's why we're expecting this. Scattered showers, pop-up thunderstorms, anything becomes severe, we will let you know immediately as we get into the, uh, well, let's say for the afternoon, evening hours. And here it is, future scan all the way to the south. And that's why we have to keep a close eye. Overnight low, 66 for Kansas City and 65 for Richmond. And your quick forecast when you look at it on 8 o'clock in the morning, 68. But here's what the deal is. By 12 noon tomorrow, 78. You'll see tomorrow's high. Last oh, graphic here. Look at that. And sunny, 82. too. Can you Very believe that? Nice. And less humid conditions coming up at 6 o'clock by the 7 a forecast. And answer the question, will that go all the way through next week? That'd be nice. It would be. All we'll right. see. Let's Pete, see. thanks. Playing games, watching videos, and doing homework. How the Dream Factory is helping one youngster accomplish it.